may seem that I have something against one-handed strikes and thrusts. And yes, to some extent I do. And then again, not necessarily. My main argument against them is controllability, power, speed. So, you can certainly train yourself to a one-handed thrust. You can use a one-handed strike. And you can gain a flowing sort of action like this where you can deliver another one quickly. But look at that, now I've actually hit something. I don't just swing through. I might miss and hit it on the second one. This is true. So, I'm not entirely discounting this as a means of doing it, but here's another thought. <laughs> Didn't need the second one, so I won't hit it so hard this time. So there's a thought. Now, also the two-handed strike, I have another means of multiplying the power. And that is, as I put everything together, I'm accelerating the end through. And I can accelerate it into it and hold it on target. Or I can accelerate it away from it for another strike. I don't necessarily have to bring it right back to the shoulder to do that. In fact, I may even hurt myself if I do that. Uh, I've tried, and yes, it does. <laughs> A little bit. But the point is, you've got a very quick follow-up on that. And also, if you look at my body, what's happening? Okay, I'll just do a couple of swings. And I, I'm reasonably under control, but, you know, that's a point of fact. In this confined area, with things around me, I mean, what the hell am I doing hitting this back here? You know, I mean, that could be something that I get tangled up in. It could be a chair, it could be could be my friend, who knows? And, you know, my posture has become relatively disrupted. Whereas, if I take this approach, I've got in two good hard strikes. And, you know, my posture is entirely undisrupted. And I'm still using all this force do it, I'll just do it, model it slowly. So okay, I'm going in and I'm still going boom. Boom. This power coming from my legs but also accelerated by this push me pull you which I have mentioned. So I just think this is a far more reliable system. I mean, my wrists are pretty strong because I've been doing Aikido for a long time. But that is coming out of my hand. If I hit something, fine. Then that tends to keep it in there. And of course I'm encouraging you to hit something. But as the earlier strike showed, okay, I was lucky that luckier that time. I managed to retain control of it. But do you want to be lucky or do you want to 
have something that's reliable. And I feel that you've also got a greater... You can aim on the first one relatively accurately, but when it comes to the second one, where you've got all that inertia moving as well, I mean, really, to make it work, you've got to go through, stop, through, through, stop, through. It's too slow. I don't think there's really any argument there from the point of view of, you know, if you want to bring something, somebody down quickly, if that's going to be head, neck, or whatever, in a self-defense situation, of course, I'm talking, uh, in serious self-defense. I really think that the double-handed approach is a much more realistic, certain way of doing it. And obviously the same really applies to the Joe. The thing is, with this screamer stick, and I'm, I don't really, I've not used a screamer stick, but it's only going to be about that long. I've got that much choke on it. And yes, you can move it quickly. I haven't got that much leverage going against you with the blow. But I think, you know, there's no point in taking the choke up there because you're losing most of the length of the stick. So, uh, you know, that seems to me pointless. So if, you've, if you're choosing a stick which has length, then, you know, Yep. Even with a hiking stick or a Joe, you're really able to put in this quick strike power. And also, with regard to Aikido, you are really developing your center, which is the more important part of it, for as far as I'm concerned. I touched on something in my last video uh, about not being totally, utterly reliant on the weapon, that you still had other possibilities. You hear of something called the unbendable arm, and you're constantly using this in Aikido. Well, you are once you get to a proper level, to a certain level. Um, the feeling with this, as you can see, as I, as I, as I enter, and my arm isn't stiff, and my arm isn't totally extended, you know, it's not like that. No, it's like that. And now, my arm's relaxed as well. And yet now, I'm deliberately putting weight on it. And yes, it is trembling a little bit. But basically, my arm is relaxed. I'm not pushing away. There may be a limit, well there's bound to be a limit to how long I can stay like this. But it's, it's very important, this idea of um, relaxing. I mean, people say this extending arm, you should feel like you're, you've got a rubber hose in it and it's filling up with water and sort of you're extending out beyond the object you're onto. Um, and that's a fine way of putting it. Uh, I mean, I won't lie, this is beginning to hurt a bit, but the point is that this is used a lot in Aikido. For instance, if we go into Ikkyo, we have two extended arms. They're not extended like that, straight, they're extended like that. So they're just short of being straight. And the important part is this. 
in fact, if I am using this as a strike, it is almost a heel palm strike because I'm using that part. I'm not using a hand like that really. I mean, in practice, uh, out on in the park there, I do because it's sort of safer. But I mean, really, the strike is with that because that is backed up by the arm and it goes through the unbendable arm and because my posture is solid it goes right through to my centre and I suppose you could say that's the backstop. Now anybody running into that has got to overcome all this that's behind it. So this this way of uh, creating a posture, creating strength, using the weapons, is all aimed at creating a body which is going to be useful in Aikido. So none of this is sort of just mindless violence for the sake of it. It's all got an intention behind it. So this ties in with some of the exercises we've been doing. Uh, I've been encouraging you to do this Torafuni. But also it can be or more realistically perhaps if somebody is coming into you and better still offline so it can be offline either way you know you've got all your force behind that and we use this for instance in many of our techniques not so violently uh, but in Ikkyo, for instance, you're moving like this because you're going to go across the body. The arms aren't completely extended. You're basically taking control of the attacker's arm or Uke's arm in the dojo and you're just putting distance and you're entering in. So you've taken their balance at this point and your posture is solid. So this is the point that, well to repeat myself, we're creating a strong solid mass behind whatever is, whatever you're using. So whether it be your hand, whether it be a stick, you're putting your whole strength onto that point. Or if you're doing a technique, your strength, well, power, whatever, is on that point. There's no pushing back against you, or at least it'd have to be extremely strong to do so. You're, so you're maximizing the use of your body. And of course, you're developing a certain musculature and way of moving. And, you know, I'm not doing Aikido, I'm not doing these sticks because I particularly fear being attacked or because I want to be attacked or anything. It's, Although I'm not even particularly worried about being attacked. But you're much less likely to be attacked if you're clearly strong. I mean, they're going to look for somebody else. Um, if you're moving, if you're alert. So you're putting together, hopefully you never have to use it.
that's the honest truth. I don't want, you know, anybody in their right mind doesn't want to go around hurting people and jabbing their eyes with sticks and so forth. Um, and but if you if you if you look sort of rather, I mean, you may not be able to help it, but. <laughs> Well, the more modern thing, well, you know, the old mobile phone, and you're walking along like this, and, you know, you're not paying the slightest bit of attention, bang, or you've got the time, mate, possibly, and you, you look at it, and you're not really aware, and bang. So, you know, but if you, if you, if you are looking around, and if you're clearly aware, and with it, and you're not moving in a way that's feeble, I mean, you can't move in a feeble way, or at least you have to try, uh, once you've developed a strong core to your body. And I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I would speculate that quite a few aches and pains might disappear as you develop this strong core, as you get the musculature around your middle, around your back, buttocks, legs, instead of becoming masses of jelly, <laughs> shouldn't be cruel, um, you know, they're all going to work to support the bones. As I say, not a doctor, but you know, this is just my take on it. Thank you.